Hello, and today we will be discussing bacterial genomics in terms of genome sequencing of bacterial genomes. This tutorial is intended for students as well as for lecturers who intend developing their own platforms for bacterial genome sequencing, annotation as an assembly. So three primary objectives when we teach students is the first is the concept of the bacterial genome sequencing experimental design, both in terms of the lab work, which involves DNA extraction, as well as the actual experimental design for genome sequencing. The second concept which we focus on is the bacterial genome assembly and annotation pipeline. Now this involves multiple steps and students should be cognizant of the different steps involved in bacterial genome assembly and as well as sequence quality assessment and annotation. And finally, we look at analytical skills, in which case we look at a genome in terms of its utility and its applicability, and in terms of explaining the hypothesis pertaining to the bacterial genome. So learning outcomes for these kind of modules are basically to design an experiment to sequence the genome for bacterium in terms of wet lab as well as in silico design, design the pipeline for genome sequence assembly and annotation. And finally, you have your analysis, which may require the usage of additional tools such as RAST or anti-SMASH for antibiotic resistance profiling. So we look at bacterial genomes in terms of the organization of the genome this may be in the form of a circular chromosome as well as plasmid DNA or in some bacteria, you may have linear chromosomes. You look at experimental design for genome sequencing projects, preparation of library, which is generic as most platforms will require their own specific library preparation protocols, processing of genome sequence data, analysis using specific tools, rapid annotation using subsystem technology, which I have covered in another tutorial online. And finally, the validation of assembly, which may involve the use of PCR based techniques to validate your assembly. So genome organization in bacteria is generally a single circular chromosome, you have smaller plasmid DNA, as well as linear chromosomes. So one of the tools which can be applied post sequencing is a tool known as RNAML. You have different versions of it, but it essentially predicts the number of 5S, 8S, and 16S, 18S, 23S, and 28S ribosomal RNA in full genome sequences. Now this is a very useful tool because if you miss out certain number of RNA components in your genome assembly, it may be an indication of misassembly or incomplete sequencing. The second aspect which you look at is genes and biochemical pathways. For instance, you have discovered a microbe which has a phenotype of metal tolerance. You can then look through your assembled genome and identify specific genes which may be related to metal tolerance. For instance, genes related to the export of toxic metal ions from the cytosol, as well as genes related to exclusion of metal ions or specific pumps, which may be involved in the efflux of metal ions that are toxic. Other genomic features which you may be interested in looking at are pathogenicity islands, which give an indication of the pathogenic nature of microbes, secretion systems, such as the type three and type two secretion systems, the CRISPR arrays, which are currently being explored in terms of their utility in genotyping of microbes. And finally, you can look at recombination sites within the genome, which are points at which phages have integrated into the genome. So in terms of experimental design, we have specific steps, which we need to undertake in order to ensure genome completeness. So this is one of the exercises which you can present to your students. You give them an idea of a genome, or you can look at a genome, look back at a genome, and you, from the NCBI gene bank, 
So this is the model genome with a genome size of 4.5 megabases, for instance. You then provide them with a platform, which is a high seq P150, and you give them an coverage, which is 150x. So in this case, they should be able to compute the data output, which is required from a P P150 platform. You can also analyze their skills in terms of looking at error rates. So you can ask them to assume that 20% of the reads will not achieve Q30. And so you need to focus on improving your data quality or data output in order to attain this complete coverage of this specific genome. So this is the generic steps involved in library preps, which you can introduce during your tutorial. These are the DNA quality control steps which are undertaken at the wet lab. Then you have DNA shearing, which involves fragmentation of the DNA into the requisite sizes, after which you have adapter ligation based on your specific platform. So in Illumina platforms, we have an index which we attach to the five prime and three prime ends of the gene of the DNA sequence, which will facilitate the assembly and annotation process. Finally, you have library quality controls, which is done prior to loading the DNA into the sequencer and finally your sequencing. So these are the steps involved in library preparation and all students of bioinformatics should be cognizant of these steps. So the next step will be genome assembly and annotation in which you use software to assemble, annotate, and interpret genomic information. This will be covered in the next tutorial session.